All right, the next kind of semi-occluded phonation or vocal warm-up is called the lip trill. Now the lip trill is probably the most popular vocal warm-up and when I say popular I want to make sure that I'm clear on this. That doesn't mean that it's the most effective. When I say popular that doesn't mean that it's the most effective or that it's the warm-up that works the best. It's a good one but it's not the one I recommend first. The resonant tracking, the nasal buzzing that we did in the previous videos is what I'm recommending. But lip trills is the most popular in the sense that it's what most people are familiar with. More people have been exposed to lip trills than any other warm-up. And it's not a bad warm-up, it's, it's a really good warm-up as a matter of fact. It's just, in my opinion, not as good as the resonant tracking. So just to get you up to speed, this is a, this is a lip trill. Um, sometimes people call it bubbles, bubble lips or whatever, but that's, that's sort of stupid in my opinion. Don't call it bubble lips. Call it by its real name. It's really called lip trills. These are lip trills. Okay. And I'm sure many of you have probably seen this before. All right. Now, before I do a few lip trills and give you some tips on it, I want to let you know why I think that resonant tracking, buzzing on nasals, is a better warm-up than lip trills. It's pretty much for one major reason, okay? Take a guess. At this point in the course, I've made a big deal about several things, but there's one vocal technique idea that I keep repeating, that I keep emphasizing. What is it? <laughs> All right. Those of you that said cry mode, vocal cry mode, are absolutely correct. The reason tracking on nasals or um, resonant tracking is more effective for a warm up uh, than lip trills, in my opinion, is because it gets the voice into a cry position better. That's it. And I wanted you to know that. But that doesn't mean that you can't put the larynx into a cry position when you do lip trills, you certainly can. It's just not as intuitive as the nasals. All right. So anyways, let's do lip trills. Good lip trills are, are typically supported by taking the weight off of your cheeks off your face. So don't do this. It doesn't work quite as good. You need to kind of push in on your cheeks. Okay. And get the weight of your cheeks off. That helps make lip trills work better. And you can do lip trills with scales. You can go to your keyboard and play maybe melodic fifths. Like this. As I go to the keyboard, just moving up one chromatic step little melodic fifths. Okay, so it's perfectly cool to do it with the keyboard. In fact, I recommend that you do. But lip trills also fall into this category of workouts called uh, singer sizing, which are just sort of random uh, I think we called them earlier in our in our in our course um, FOM freedom of movement. So lip trills are sort of a freedom of movement idea. So it's great to have notes on the keyboard, but you can also just sort of randomly do it. Um, most of the time, that's what I see most people doing is just sort of When you do lip trills, make sure that you always go through the passaggio. 
just like anything else you do in your vocal training with my program. Um, always go through your vocal break. Same with lip trills. Now you can have different patterns. Notice I'm just sort of going to tease up, go down, and then tease up a little higher, go down and tease up and go higher. I just made that up right now, but it's a good idea. All right. Just like everything else, the higher I go, the harder I cry into my lip trills. So that's the lip trills. They're great. They're really helpful, but um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't replace the resonant tracking, the buzzing on the nasals over the lip trills. Okay. Let's go to the next version of Samuel Clue Foundations. <laughs>